Hi everyone, this is the first FXGL25 tutorial with shaders. And FXGL25 will be released in September 25. The, the snapshot version of it is already available. You can find it uh, from here. That's the version. And all of that will be in a repository where you can just download everything and work from there. You will need JDK23 and higher to run this. And this is the Maven file that you can get from that repository in the <clears throat> video description. So today we're going to build a simple application that will use um, shader available from one of these. So this is a website that has a bunch of pre-built shaders that you can just plug and play mostly. Some of the things will need changing, and we're going to look at those. <clears throat> Before we do anything else, we're going to just build a simple example demo to see, well, we need to make sure that it runs. <clears throat> cool. This is what you should see once you've done this very basic setup, it will give you a window with nothing else in it, which is good. And the current version should state 25 plus dev snapshot. And the date should be 2412 or later, because that means you're using the latest <clears throat> built version. Right, so uh, first we're going to just grab shader anything you like really. This one looks fine. Click here, it will show you the code. Grab almost all of it. And then we just can put this in a string. We'll use a raw string because that Makes it easier to write code in it. Uh, it doesn't fit on a single page, so I might just clean it up a bit. So we'll talk about these in a minute. Any uniform variable is available from FXGL. Well, almost. At the moment, it's just floats. But in a future versions, we're going to have um, VEC2 as well. I'm just removing stuff that isn't necessarily needed because it's commented out or not used. It seems to be redefined here, so it's basically that, right? Don't need that line. Where's this used? This is used here and it's just basically a mouse, right? So we'll just use a mouse. In this repository, by the way, there is a simple app available. If you've never touched a shader before, it's, it's this one. So it's literally just one line of code, which takes uniform value for red. But we're going to look at a um, slightly more complex example from the website, so you can have a range of examples. Right, can we just... Okay, I think that's reasonable. I don't want to touch too much. So we'll leave it as this. So it's more or less give or take as is taken from the website. And we're going to make a few changes because VEC2 isn't supported just yet in FXGL, as in FXGL binding to a uniform variable. What we can do is basically split it up into two parts. Mouse X, mouse Y. <clears throat> 
and do the same for resolution x resolution y this way there are floats so we can deal with them and if you don't want to touch the rest of the code then you can just simply do this so that way you still have your vector to to play with so resolution x resolution y okay at this point we think that the shader is good to go we just need to bind those five variables which we will do uh, once we define our gl view the gl image view name is still tentative it may change is your interface to glsl and to construct one you need three things you need a width you need height which in this case i'm just going to use the same so it occupies the entire window and the shader itself which is the driver behind the rendering of that image view then you need to define the properties of the view if you're using a very simple shader that doesn't use any uniform variables, then you don't need to do anything. <clears throat> but in some, rather in most cases, you actually need to set something. So in this case, we get properties of the view. The properties function is going to return a property map, which is the standard FXGL property map for anything, really. It is its backend is FXGL properties, whose backend is JarFX properties. So all of that is listenable, all of that is bindable, all that good stuff. So we're going to take that, I'll just copy it here so I can see all of my variables in one place. And I'm going to populate them one by one. The string name of the variable has to match because that's how it binds it. Set value, so this is a float, but we have to use doubles because FXGL doesn't understand floats and GLSL here doesn't use float, uh, doesn't use doubles. So we just do a bit of conversion uh, or the conversion is done by FXGL, but we need to tell FXGL that it's a double. And you can do that by just putting a dot in there. So start time is zero which we can then update at runtime later on. And then uh, just do the same for a lot of these. Um, mouse y is zero. Resolution x is going to match the um, width and height of the image view, because that's the resolution. And all of that is now done. This can go away. The properties have been set. And we do need to update those three because the resolution doesn't change in this case. Time does. And mouse X, mouse Y do as well as I move my cursor around. There are multiple ways of doing that. But since we're in this scope, I'll just create an easy function the scope and then we'll set it to run every 16 milliseconds and you can also statically import this in which case the function becomes this so this is your standard go-to in fxgl if you want to run something at a particular interval you run it providing the lambda function which runs at that interval and this is the interval so this will need updating instead of setting we now increment if it's an int value or a double value then there is a convenient um, increment function we're going to increment by because it's in seconds presumably and i'm going to increment it by 16 milliseconds and mouse x and mouse y we're going to set so at some later on as development continues of the shader support things like that resolution mouse x mouse y time those are going to be 
by default supported so you don't actually need to write any of this in the future and a default um, list of such variables will be provided later on in the documentation mouse x we're just going to use input to get mouse x y uh, ui and then the same for y <coughs> Keep in mind that OpenGL and therefore GLSL treats everything from uh, bottom to top, meaning that the Y axis goes not down but up, but in FXGL and JavaFX it goes down. So this may need flipping, which is 720 minus 720 being your height. So if your mouse coordinate is at 100 then normally you'll just think 100 down because that's how it's rendered in JarFX. but it's actually in OpenGL coordinates will be 720 minus 100 so 720 goes up minus 100 from there which gives you the point in the GLSL coordinate space that you want Right, this looks good enough. Let's see if this runs and we'll debug it as necessary. Oh, right, we haven't actually attached it to the scene graph. So we've got our view, but it's not being rendered because it's not anywhere. <clears throat> to make it part of the scene graph, at the moment you will need a game object. In the future, you will be able to attach it to just normal JavaFX scene graph but for now because stuff in the scene graph doesn't get updated on every frame we need to attach it to a to an entity an entity is a game object game objects update uh, get updated every frame and that should now work cool and as you move your mouse around this is moving very in a very weird way as I move my mouse. I suspect it's because the mouse coordinates are not quite one-to-one. -one, so maybe they're normalized in the shader. <clears throat> but regardless, we can play with this and we can get it to do stuff. So the Effective tutorial is now over. I'll just play with this now a little bit more. And I think this stuff is potentially normalized because it's moving way too fast. Divided by resolution. Let's see what happens. Yeah, that's a bit better. You have a bit more control now and less of a kind of jerky movement. And that's effectively all rendered in OpenGL, which is great. The only concern, potential concern, is that it's actually rendered once off screen, then copied to CPU RAM, then sent to the FXGL Java layer, which then puts it into an image view and then sends it back to GPU. Not very efficient, but still relatively cool. Is that the color? Let's see if we can change it. <clears throat> so to kind of green-ish. So it's red, reduce that, green, make it a bit higher and then Reduce that. Yeah, it's green now. Way too green. But hopefully it gives you an idea of what you can do with these things. And it's a lot of fun. And you can also get some really nice effects that you wouldn't otherwise be able to get or they would be very slow if you were to render them in pure FXGL JavaFX. 
And if you've got any examples running, this is currently supported only on Windows. Uh, and we need to get Mac and Linux native libraries compiled. But once that's done, it'll be supported cross-platform. But at the moment, for development purposes, it's just Windows. So if you've got a Windows box, then play with it. And if you've got any issues, report them back on the main FXGL repository. Do send me some examples if you've played with them and um, they look nice. As for this tutorial, this is done. I'll get that uploaded. Not all of this, but the main stuff, the simple example one. This one is something that you can build yourself by just finding the website. And we'll close the tutorial. Given that it's holiday time, happy holidays.